Well, one of the things that we can do is what Jay Abraham calls a risk reversal. Okay, a uh, version of a risk reversal is a guarantee. Now, when I recommend to coaches, test offering a guarantee. Okay, guarantee that your client will get their dog to stop barking or guarantee that they'll lose the 20 pounds or guarantee that they'll find a romantic partner or guarantee that they'll launch their business or whatever it is that they want to do, whatever problem they want to solve, whatever opportunity they want to take advantage of, guarantee the result. Now, what do most coaches say to me when I say that to them? One that I hear a lot from coaches is, well, I can't guarantee that someone will lose 20 pounds because we don't know what's going to happen. You know, I can't guarantee that they'll launch their business. I mean, that relies on them. What if they don't show up for their coaching appointment? I can't guarantee that this thing is going to happen. So uh, a lot of coaches, and this is over many years of teaching coaches to do this. Like, you know, I have a lot of experience with this one. This is my my own anecdotal evidence, but there's, you know, there's some data in here, uh, what we like to call anic data. I've heard that one a lot. And what I think is, is I think that when, um, I think that when a coach imagines offering a guarantee, it's drawing a line in the sand. It's putting a stake in the ground. It's putting skin in the game. It's taking risk. It's putting yourself out there. Right? It's kind of extending yourself and not knowing if you're going to succeed or get paid. And so what you do is you, you do kind of a risk analysis, a risk asset assessment, and you come up with, why would this be a bad idea? See, most of us, we, we succeed without realizing it by avoiding failure and then doing a little bit of like... We're doing the thing that you want to do to succeed, but we're constantly trying to avoid making a mistake. How do you fly a plane from New York to Los Angeles? Well, one of the ways is you don't crash. Okay, so you need to know that you're going from New York to Los Angeles. You need to do that and you need to be on track. But most of the checklists and the double checks and the systems and whatever, they're not there to get the plane from New York to Los Angeles. So to make sure that you don't make a mistake and crash the plane while you're flying through a cloud or some other thing. And every time there's a plane crash, everybody hears about it. And then what they do is they go and like forensically study what happened to try to pinpoint the mistake so that they can take the fix, right? The patch for that mistake that those pilots made or that happened in a system, and then go and spread it across every plane and every flight from then on. In other words, you know, the everything on that checklist that they do pre-flight, number 72, where they, you know, check this particular gauge in a particular way, that's there probably because some plane crashed 30 years ago, and it was because some pilot didn't check that one. And when they finally got down to it, they're like, well, we don't want to have that again. Add another thing to the checklist. But it turns out that it's not a very wise way to behave if you're starting a coaching business or trying to build a coaching business. Why is this? Because if you're always looking around at what could go wrong, you're going to just be paralyzed. You will literally be stopped at every possible step. Because you can come up with a hundred imaginary reasons and things that'll go wrong, even though they, they won't. So for example, when I started offering guarantees for my coaching packages, consulting, teaching, and programs, I was nervous. You know, I had a book and I all of a sudden offered a money back guarantee. It's like, well, what if everybody starts asking for their money back? You know, when you have a merchant account, they ask you, you know, what's your money back guarantee? And then they they kind of might hold some of your money if you offer a money back guarantee, because what if all your customers ask for their money back? But here's the deal. When you offer a guarantee, there's two things that are really important to remember. Number one, the guarantee isn't signing your name somewhere in stone in reality saying this thing is going to happen. 
So in other words, if you offer a guarantee that someone's going to launch their business, you're not signing your name somewhere that if they don't launch their business, that God's going to show up and put you in jail because it didn't come true. There isn't anything like that that happens. Got it? So that's that's the first thing. Now, I mean, if you you know make someone a promise that they're going to make a uh, hundred percent a month interest in your new crypto coin, and they don't, you, you're going to have some people that are going to you know, and people put millions of dollars in, and then you scam them. You'll definitely have some powerful forces show up in your life, and uh, you'll you know you'll be going to visit the uh, the clink for a while. But what I mean is that if you say to your client who wants to launch their business, if you say launch your business in three months, guaranteed. So I guarantee that you'll launch your business in three months. Here are the conditions. You have to show up for your coaching sessions. You have to take one action a week, you know, and uh, you have to implement what we discuss here. And if you do that and you don't launch your business in three months, then you can ask me for a refund. So the guarantee isn't a guarantee that it's going to happen. It's a guarantee that if they don't get the result, they can ask you for your money back or their money back. Or you can say, and if you don't uh, launch your business, you have a choice. Either we can work together for you know another 30 days to launch the business, or I can give you a partial refund. Or we can, You can make up whatever the right conditions of the guarantee are. So when I hear that response, which a lot of coaches do is like, but I, I can't guarantee that their dog is going to stop barking. All right. The coach is thinking about it from their perspective and they're thinking about it from kind of an absolutist way. They're not thinking about it from the client's perspective, who's getting ready to give them, you know, $2,000 to get coached in how to train their dog well, and who really is freaking out because the dog's barking all the time and they don't know, uh, they don't realize, oh, saying to them, I guarantee, you know, if you do the coaching and you spend 10 minutes a day with your dog training them for 90 days, at the end of the 90 days, they're going to stop barking at the mailman or whatever it is. And if they don't stop barking, right, we can continue working together until we get your dog to stop barking. Or you can ask for 100% money back or whatever the condition could be there. Annie's version of it, by the way, when she works with clients is she says, now I tend to build, I like charging people in advance. So if I'm doing coaching or consulting, I want them to pay me in the beginning for at least a month so that I know they've got skin in the game and they're going to be showing up. Okay, that's where I'm coming from. Annie's on the other end of the spectrum. She bills them, you know, the month later. And what she says is, I will bill you at the end of the month. And if you don't feel that you've gotten the value, you don't have to pay. That's her way of doing a risk reversal guarantee. My way is saying, Give me the money up front. If you're not satisfied, you know, I'll keep working with you or you can stay in or I'll give you your money back or whatever the conditions of that guarantee would be. Do you understand the difference? The point with a guarantee is not, it, it's not about the guarantee. It's about comforting the person who they're insecure and they don't know how all this works and they don't know you very well, and they just want to feel like they're dealing with a professional and their risk is lower. So what you're doing with the guarantee is you're taking some of the risk away. Now, yes, once in a while, someone will ask for their money back. That happens. For most people, though, that use one of these um, techniques of doing a risk reversal, they get more business as a result of doing it so the refunds that they have to actually give are more than compensated for. Yeah. It also, frankly, you know, it causes you to show up better when you know that, you know, you got to perform. It makes you show up and be like, all right, I, you know, I got to get this done. I got to do a good job.